rest of the characters from the New Testament that we're looking at today. Review week next week, and then Lord willing, first week in February, we're going to be look at biblical music. So, all right, let's go to Acts chapter 19, where our memory verse is from. Looking at Aristarchus. Acts chapter 19, he is a companion in travel. Companion in travel. Beginning of chapter 19, it says, came to pass it while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. Uh, and then he uh, is there with them for quite a while. Stays in Ephesus, um, I think about 18 months at that time. And then down in verse 21, we'll pick up. He had uh, leaving Ephesus there in Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse number 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went, sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And at the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain into the craftsmen. Whom when he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and our magnificence should be destroyed, and all Asia and the world worship it. When they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered into the, unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. Let's go to word in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to come and look at your word this morning, that you would open up our hearts and uh, just draw us closer to thee. Just thank you for the examples of these in the Bible and uh, that we can also apply to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Aristarchus and Gaius were men of Macedonia. They weren't even of Asia. They weren't of Ephesus, where Paul here. But uh, they were here with Paul, and they got dragged in to the theater um, and the disciples wouldn't they would, the rest of the disciples wouldn't let Paul go in they were afraid to get uh, beaten or killed and, um, but we see a thing of Gaius and Aristarchus it says that they are Paul's companions in travel Paul's companions in travel down uh, through to chapter 20 it says after the uproar was ceased Paul called unto the disciples and embraced them and parted for to go to Macedonia and when he had gone over those parts and given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. And there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail to Sy unto Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia, so Sopater of Berea, and there were the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. And these going before tarried for us at Troas. So. Uh, they had. They were not only his companions uh, traveled with him into to Ephesus and Asia, but also back through Macedonia, back into Greece, then back into Macedonia again, and then we're going to go with him back to, uh, um, back into Syria and into Jerusalem. Um, traveling in the Bible days was difficult and dangerous, a lot harder than it is now, and you know, oftentimes, especially in Paul's missionary journeys, they covered. Quite a few miles, thousands of miles. Now this is over the course of about 15 years or so, but um, still, you know, it said he he traveled one place, was there a few months, gone in, gone over those parts. I mean, so he was, you know, like a like with our evangelists and stuff today, where they will uh, travel one church and then travel to another church and travel to another church and travel to another church. That's what Paul was doing. 
you know, and uh, sure, it might not have covered as many miles as we do today with the use of vehicles, but uh, a lot more miles on foot than what most of us are used to. And um, pretty much just traveling by, you know, uh, foot, by animal, by boat, oftentimes, uh, especially once you get to certain places, roads were not necessarily very good. Uh, certainly very dusty and dirty traveling, so. Um, Aristica sacrificed comfort and security to get the gospel to the lost. Uh, we shouldn't allow our own comfort to keep us from taking the gospel to those around us, to those farther away, to those it isn't convenient to go to and reach to a lost and dying world. The name Aristarchus means the best ruler. The best ruler. An interesting name. Um, he was willing to be to use the Lord, willing to be a companion of Paul in his travel to help him to minister to others, to help spread the gospel. He's taken by the angry mob being a, because of being a companion of Paul here in Acts chapter 29. Uh, he's elsewhere called, and we saw that he traveled with Paul here. If you go to Colossians, Colossians, So part of Macedonia and Greece. Colossians chapter 4. And verse number 10. Says, calls him a fellow prisoner. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you and Marcus, sister, son to, Bar to Barnabas, touching whom he received commandments. If he come to you, receive him. So Aristarchus was also imprisoned along with Paul. And in Philemon, who is the church of Colossae as well, um, in verse 24 in Philemon, it says also this Marcus Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, uh, it says there salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So Aristarchus, both his fellow prisoner and fellow laborer uh, in the gospel with him, uh, the, a companion in Paul's travels, uh, even through his suffering and imprisonment as well. He was one of those who was a great help to the Apostle Paul. Uh, and not only Paul's missionary journeys, uh, having to do a lot of travel on foot and stuff, but it would have been uh, expensive as well. I mean, oftentimes, like uh, Paul as a tent maker would have to practice his trade all along. Um, and uh, tiring, tiring. Walking all those distances, uh, ministering and establishing churches, and continuing on to the next one. Uh, men like Aristarchus made it possible for Paul to travel and do the work that God had called him to do. Whenever Wherever Paul went, he was not the lone voice of the gospel, but one of many. He often had many with, the, with him. Uh, as a matter of fact, he laments one time saying that there were none others with him, and then just lists like two, two that had been able to stay with him. So he often had a whole company along with him to help uh, establish churches and preach the gospel. Sometimes he'd send them off into different areas, as it said, that uh, they had gone before him into Troas. Uh, Aristarchus. As Paul's companion in travel and also suffered uh, for the cause of Christ due, uh, due to um, serving the Lord. Right? He's willing to go out of his comfort zone. Traveled not just around Macedonia where he was from. We see that he'd gone to Asia. He'd gone to Greece. He uh, went with Paul to Jerusalem. He ended up with him at Rome. Uh, all over the, the known Roman Empire. Um, traveling isn't easy, nor is living out of a suitcase easy. Aristarchus left comforts of home and family to travel with Paul, get the gospel news out. His travels were not convenient or comfortable. At times, his travels landed him in prison. We too should be a travel companion to missionaries, just as Aristarchus was for Paul. 
Sure, things have changed over the past 2,000 years, so there's different ways in which we can practically be a companion and travel to missionaries. Think of being a blessing to those that come through, right? And those that are on, especially on deputation or on furlough, doing a lot of traveling around to the different churches to report or to share their burden for the country God has called them to, you know, be a help and encouragement to them as they, you know, as you see them, and then uh, continue to follow up. You know, it's a lot easier now with email and things like that. So, you know, one of the ways, one of the ways to be a companion, you know, to someone is to know what's going on, right? To, uh, to know what's going on in their life. One of the best ways of that is in uh, writing to your missionaries, reading prayer letters, and praying for them. Uh, in Proverbs 16, chapter 4, Proverbs 16, sorry, 16, verse 24, says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. You know, uh, missionaries love to hear from all of us, right? It helps give an encouragement to them to know you're praying for them, to know you're uh, concerned in their ministry and uh, concerned for the people they're ministering to as well. Uh, oftentimes, Paul said, brethren, pray for us, pray for us. The word of God will go forth. Um, so pray for your missionaries. Continue in prayer for them. Uh, reading the letters that they send, the prayer letters, right? In Colossians 4, I think that's where it talks about this. Um, Paul says, Paul says, Colossians 4, I think that's where he talks about. Um, and verse number 16, yeah, that's it. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So, you know, we, even back then they had that same thing, right? They read, we don't have the uh, epistle to the Laodiceans. It wasn't determined to be uh, a fully inspired and become part of the New Testament, but uh, no doubt it's still just exhortation from the Apostle Paul to the Laodiceans and, and this to the Colossians and told them to read each other's letters that they might get more and know more about what was on Paul's mind and hearts for them. Uh, in 1 John, chapter 1 and verse 4, uh, John says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full right when we hear about what's going on uh, with our missionaries right you hear about people getting saved people growing in the lord and uh, the work and that that god has done the things that he has provided it gives us joy it helps us to see our part in their ministry um, of course giving money to worldwide missions right to meet the needs of the missionaries and that the gospel might go forth abroad uh, philippians chapter 4 Philippians chapter 4, and beginning of verse number 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only, for even Thessalonica ye sent once and again to my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all in abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, and other things we can do to be a companion in their travel is take a missions trip to one of our missionaries. You know, that requires sacrifice on our part, right? Cost, expense of it, um, you know, taking off work or whatever saving up for years oftentimes I've, I've heard testimonies of people who wanted to go on a missions trip for a long time to, to help out the missionaries and see the, the mission field themselves and and spent years a decade even or more saving to be able to take a missions trip and uh it's a good way to to see how the lord uh, is using our missionaries as well as be a help and encouragement that, to them as well as get a better burden for those uh to be saved um uh, missionary displays at our church when we have missionaries in when we have 
uh, other things that we've received from them and show. Um, talking, getting to know your missionaries, lots of ways in which we can contact them and talk to them now, not just uh, when they're here, but uh, through other, other uh, things. Uh, texting and emails and, uh, and other ways also. Um, it gives them encouragement. Right? The ministry is one of the most perilous of professions. And a good example of that from the Apostle Paul's life and even all those that were around him, such as Aristarchus, and seeing the things that they went through. And uh, that still goes on today. A lot of, um, lot of uh, things and suffering that uh, our ministers and our missionaries go through uh, that the Lord um, allows, but a lot of it that the, the uh, attempts of Satan to try to prevent the gospel from going forth. So uh, be in prayer for missionaries. Write to them, read their prayer letters, giving. Uh, consider going a missions trip. Um, and get to know them better and to get to know the field that the Lord has called them to and how the Lord can also use you to help reach people around us and all around the world. The example, Aristarchus, and being a companion in travel. Now back in our memory verse, the verse says in Acts chapter 19, and the whole city was filled with confusion Bringing the gospel into the dark world creates confusion, right? It creates confusion until people are willing to see the light. And when God works in their hearts, and it brings peace. The whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this time to come to your word this morning. Pray that you just strengthen us and guide us. Lord, we thank you for the example of these we have seen in the New Testament. Lord, we pray that you would uh, help us, Lord, in uh, following the example of these faithful men uh, down through the centuries. Lord, we pray that you would um, help us, Lord, in, in being a partaker in the ministry of our missionaries, Lord, in uh, praying for them, writing them, reading their letters, uh, communicating with them, understanding their needs and their struggles and things going on and, and the blessings that you have uh, shown them as well. Lord, we pray that you would uh, just help us in uh, seeing more of the uh, ministries that we support and that we might uh, be more partakers and companions with them in their travels and travails. We pray that you would uh, bless the service in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning service in about 10 minutes.